Hi guys, welcome to my channel biomedical.in and today we are going to learn more about biosignals. Biosignal is an important topic for the GATE 2020 exam as well as to understand the basics of biomedical engineering. So let's dive into biosignals. Biosignals is a topic which everyone knows about but it is very interesting how it is interpreted. I asked a colleague of mine here at Howard, what are biosignals? And his answer being an engineer was ECG, EEG, EMG. I asked him, what else? What are the other biosignals? He was confused, wondering what I am talking about. Then he told me blood pressure could be one of those signals. So, what do you think are biosignals apart from the ones which he mentioned? Write them down in your notebook. Let's move forward. By definition, biosignals is a description of physiological phenomena. Like here you can see that there is a physician and he is carrying out a visual inspection of a subject. This subject is emitting multiple biosignals which are being detected by the physician. So these could be sweating, headache, laughter, hunger, tiredness, excitement. All of them are the biosignals which are being generated by the body. In simple terms, anything which tells us what is going inside the body is a bio signal. Please mind my handwriting. It is like really bad. Like everybody thought that I'm going to be a doctor. So my handwriting is really, really bad. So, but in our education curriculum, we are taught to think only in a certain way about bio signals. We think like this is the bio signal. But this is not a biosignal. This is the registry of the signal which is generated from here. So here there is a generation which is happening and here is the registry which is happening and we call this as biosignal in our education curriculum. Which is actually not the biosignal. Biosignals are something which are being generated over here. So let's first look into what is the journey of a biosignal and how uh, we learn about them more. So as I mentioned to you that there are two major parts of uh, any biosignal, the generation and the registration. So in generation we have various sources like we have the heart sounds, lung sounds, snoring sounds. So our body has all these sound sources which produces various signals. Now in this setup, we have a, a, a stethoscope over here which is recording all kind of sounds. You remember the stethoscope which is used by the doctor to measure the signal. Stethoscope is a biomedical device. So the stethoscope is here lying on the body. It is interfaced to the skin. And when these sounds, so these sounds tra start their uh, traveling from here. They travel from here to the surface of the skin and they experience various kind of decay. So this intensity decay determines what would be recorded on the surface. So on the surface, we have a diaphragm. Diaphragm acts as a large tumbler like which we use to collect water. So diaphragm is used to collect all the sounds which are generated in the body and it translates into this bell and through this bell, this signal goes to our microphone. So in the microphone, the signal is translated from a sound signal to an electrical signal. And this electrical signal is then recorded in the form of SPCG. But in certain instances, this signal is also amplified and we hear it in the earpiece of the doctor directly. So at that time, there is no translation or conversion required it is direct coupling and it goes to the doctor you would remember that doctor's stethoscope has 
um, recording device and it goes and this is how we have so it's a really simple mechanical device in that case uh, on the only coupling happens and the doctor is able to listen to the amplified heart sounds and then make a decision about the patient so the actual bio signal which was generated was the heart sounds lung sounds and the snoring sounds they were translated into spcg which is recorded in the form of a registry of bio signal so if like as a biomedical engineer everything must be explained through a model so as in bioengineering we explain everything through a model we have here a mathematical model with us let's look into the mathematical model so in the mathematical model we have the propagation losses which are represented by the resistance here z1 and coupling and conversion losses which are depicted by z2 so the source of bio signal experiences these propagation losses and the coupling and conversion losses before it can be registered in the body uh, registered in the machine so this process the whole journey of the bio signal is very very important for any kind of signal to be recorded and to be interpreted by the physician later on now let's look into very first bio signals so the very first bio signals were recorded as early as 460 bc by hippocrates but the major mechanism so the first one like the a which we can see is the physician used to put his ear on the lungs directly over here so as he is putting his lungs uh, his ears directly on the lungs he, he was able to listen to all the deep sounds and make a physical interpretation about the ailment which that person might be facing so he was a sensor who was trying to record the various bio signals then there is another type of technique the b which is the percussion in which as you would remember the percussion like percussion instrument in the sounds when you tap it it produces sound so in the same manner the body is striked and it produces a sound or it produces a response which is generated so it is this is also classified as a signal which is called induced signal because we are inducing it inside the body by carrying out this activity so this uh, is another type of bio signal which was recorded really early another one is palpation so in palpation also the physician used to press the body so like you can see in the figure c the physician is pressing here and he is trying to notice if there is any hardening of the soft tissue how are the organs behaving and that is how he interprets whether the, there is a, any problem with the patient so this is also another type of bio signal which is called the induced bio signal or it can be a permanent bio signal also but here he is pushing he is applying force so it is a induced bio signal inspection the visual inspection as we uh, talked generally about is all about how the patient is viewing the doctor and what kind of signals they are emanating which are translated directly in the mind of the physician it doesn't require a device so these were the very first bio signals which are still being used by many physicians around the world uh, this is a, one of the first oldest bio signal measurement which was done by hippocrates like you can see he is carrying out a palpation over here so what were the inherent limitation of these signals like we saw that how these signals were recorded and what are the major limitation which these signals experienced so the major uh, problem was the proof of bio signals so right now like if there was a ecg like we registered it as this but in some other patient it is like this and we mentioned that there is a heart rate variability but at that time there was no registry so there was no proof a physician might hear listening to the sounds inside this uh, person might interpret it differently from physician 1 to physician 2 so there was no consistent proof between the two physician and there was no sufficient proof of bio signal so this was a major limitation the next thing is analysis of bio signal as we couldn't record 
so we that is the reason we couldn't even analyze uh, the signal later on like right now we have all the software but we cannot carry out the analysis was not possible the proof was not possible analysis was not possible we couldn't compare as i already mentioned the proof was not there whether the two bio signals are matching or not and it became really difficult to interpret circulation of bio signal what do we mean by that so the problem is at that time there were no journals so a physician couldn't communicate to another physician that this is um, uh, how the bio signal should look like so the knowledge was really limited so as you can see so this figure perfectly represents the transformation of the bio signals from what it was to what it has become previously they used to listen to the patient sounds manually then lanek developed this stethoscope in the stethoscope he was able to listen to the sounds it acted in the same manner and then we developed like even sophisticated stethoscope and now you, you, it is wireless so you don't even have this wire and you can directly view it spcg on your phone so this is the development curve in the past 200 years science has progressed and it has transformed the way we read the various biosignals so the various solutions which came in this journey were uh, there were three main solution to solve those problems the first one was the verbal description so previously doctor didn't use uh, the verbal description but now they started using verbal description such as irregular pulse as a flight of gazelle so uh, other physicians are aware what is a flight of gazelle so if they can say that it is as irregular as that they can imagine what kind of ailment or what kind of disease it can correspond to so these uh, patient charts and the history also helped uh, to improve in the registration of bio signals musical notes they were used to record the heart sounds like you can see over here this is one of the earliest way of recording a bio signals recording the heart sound as the musical notes and then we uh, this also led to all these problems led to the development of this technical tool on the left side this is the world's first sphygmomanometer so because we faced those problems we were able to develop these solutions and we call them bio signals now all the ecg eeg emg those are the bio signals which were formed once we learned how to register the bio signals now let's move into the most important topic from the examination point of view it is the classification of the bio signals so the first classification is based on the existence of the bio signal so there are like two types of bio signal uh, in uh, that classification permanent signals and the induced signals so what are the permanent signals permanent signals exist without any artificial impact trigger or excitation from outside the body and they are also available at any time any given moment of time you can find an ecg inside a person who is alive to give some examples as i can show you that this is the ecg which is induced by the electrical heart muscle excitation with the typical peaks of p q r s t and this is typical and it doesn't vary from individual to individual and uh, with another example is phonocardiogram like pcg which is also induced by the various heart walls uh, closing and opening so these are the signal which are permanent in nature they exist inside the body permanently and we are able to record them by placing a lead on the patient's body then there are another type of signals which are the induced signal so the group of induced signal considers that all the bio signals are artificially triggered excited or induced in as compared to the permanent signals so they exist roughly for the duration of the excitation that is as soon as the artificial impact is over the induced bio signal decays with a certain time constant determined by the body properties you remember we saw the weak intensity decay and the strong uh, uh, strong intensity decay so those are the body properties which impact these induced bio signal the interaction of the in, uh, tissue with the induced stimulus irrespective of the stimulus nature is then recorded as an induced 
bio signal which we see more often one of the example as you can see here is the electroplethysmogram and uh, in this electroplethysmogram a artificial current is induced in the tissue and a voltage along the current path reflects the tissue impedance changes so as we push in the electric current the impedance changes the voltage is then registered as an induced bio signal as you know voltage is current multiplied by resistance so based on that current the resistance changes and based on that we are able to generate a voltage which we are able to record over here against the time and based on this voltage recording we uh, we are able to ascertain what uh, is the impedance of the tissue now let, let's look into the classification based on the dynamicity of the signals. So we can classify the signal into two types, the quasi-static signals and the dynamic signal. Basically I can say like static signals and the dynamic signal. So quasi-static or the static signals are a signal which stay in a steady state level which might change very slowly over the period of time. Whereas the dynamic signal, they change extensively. So you remember the heart rate changes when you are running, when you are like slowing down, when you are relaxing, when you are sleeping. So heart rate changes really dynamically. When you are anxious, it becomes really high, but other time it is really low. So it is very dynamic in nature. Whereas body core temperature, it changes very slowly. It takes almost a duration of 12 hours to change. So as it is changing we call it quasi static so it is half static and half dynamic so now let's move into the classification which are we are very well aware of classification of biosignal based on their origin so if it is uh, now in the first uh, th so there are total six different types of uh, these origin classification magnetic mechanic electric chemical acoustic optic so an uh, easy way to re remember this is ace mo or because I like to make like uh, things easy you can also uh, call it cameo okay so C for chemical A for acoustic M for mechanical E for electric O for optic and I missed another M so you can call it cam square EO. So let's go deeper into our terminology cameo. So M is square here. So the first one is electrocardiogram or the electroencephalogram. These are the electrical signals which are generated inside the body. So as you know that these are the electric signal and these are the most popular signals which we are aware of. All of them come in the same category EEG, ECG, EMG, all I have electric origins. So those are base, based on their classification, those are the electric biosignals. Then we have magnetic biosignals which reflect the magnetic field inside the body which is usually generated by the non-stationary currents and they communicate the various physiological information inside the body. So magnetic cardiogram is used to record the various electrical activity inside the heart. So but we are recording the magnetic activity. So the electric uh, activity produces magnetic field and that magnetic field is recorded by the magnetocardiogram and we compare the peaks in the electrocardiogram so these two are compared in conjunction so we compare the electric activity and the magnetic activity to ascertain any physiological underlying problems which can be identified so that is one of the major application of biosignals to carry out the diagnosis of any underlying problem now there are certain signals which are mechanic in nature so this is one of them, the mechanorespirograms. You remember the lungs expand and they like shrink when you breathe in or breathe out and that shows a respiratory cycle like uh, as we are like you know uh, when we breathe out. So those signals represent the mechanical movement of the lungs. 
and that's how we record them and as the origin is mechanical we call mechanic biosignals mechanorespirogram is one of them which is commonly used so coming on to the chemical biosignals the chemical biosignal reflect the chemical composition and its temporal changes in the body's solids liquids and gases so to demonstrate that like we have this example of cortisol which is a cortisol de stress hormone over the period of 24 hours so in humans we have the peak during the morning hours and it uh, later on like uh, in order to prepare the body for awakening so in order to make us awake a cortisol level rises and over the period of daytime it reduces so it's a slow changing it's a quasi static signal but it has a chemical origin so we classify it as a chemical biosignal now coming on to the acoustic biosignal acoustic biosignal are basically the representation of the sounds inside the body which we record as electric signals or as audio signals a common example is the stethoscope so based on these sounds we are able to gauge the um, the inherent physiology of like heart lung and we are able to make a specific decision about it so this is really really important to know that we are making a acoustic way of recording these things so th and it has acoustic origin as well so it's a acoustic biosignal next biosignal is the optical biosignal so what you would be wondering what are the optical biosignals so optical biosignals benefit from the light absorption and scattering which are relevant related to the propagation volume and medium both changing in in a physiological relevant way so when that happens we are like uh, the example of opto uh, blitzomogram we are able to detect whether there is any systole going on or diastole going on giving us a really accurate idea of the circulatory system so these are the six major ways magnetic mechanic electric chemical acoustic optic i can remember it by cam square eo or cameo it is an easy way to like using this mnemonics to um, remind of what are the various biosignal and what are their origins so i would like to say that biosignal form a really important part and we should focus on these basics and just to review the registry is important the generation is important and it is also important that how we classify these biosignal from the gate point of view and i hope you enjoy this video and i'm looking forward like to create the next video and please leave the comments thank you for listening